So uh, we have with us uh, this afternoon Anthony Dédier from La Poste, Alexandre Grandremy from D-Ways, uh, Rick um, Radka, sorry, from Claro Partners, and Rudy Gambier from uh, Happy Curious. So we have uh, representatives from large corporations, uh, startups, and two experts into those strategies that we are started discussing. So I will first ask them to briefly present themselves in order for you to better understand what they're working on and after we'll go down into the debate, right? You start. I am Rudy. I work at Happy Curious, a French consulting firm, and we work on sociocultural co-innovation and we try to connect uh, big brands, local authorities, and their different communities, so makers, users, consumers, associations, and different people. And we try to help them to understand the opportunities and the different uh, issues of the collaborative economy. Hi, I'm Rich with Claro Partners, um, based in Barcelona. Um, we do consortium projects with uh, large enterprises to try to understand some of the big shifts happening in the world. Things like ownership to access, services becoming networks of participants, um, the real value of data, giving it back to users rather than trying to sell it, by the way, um, and uh, micro businesses and how micro businesses can interact with, with large enterprise. Um, and we do those projects across different geographies and across different industries. Um, we work with individuals, with startups and those companies to make sense of where there's opportunities in the, in the market space. So I, hi everyone, I'm Alex, the co-founder of D-Ways, which is the, the pioneer in peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. So basically we are a social network, enable any of you guys to share your car and to make money out of it and make new friends. So the next step for us is to allow companies to do that because there is a huge potential also to share your company's cars and employees' cars. Hi everyone, I'm Anthony, I work in La Poste, Digital Innovation Division, and uh, mainly uh, our mission, uh, not goal, or goal, rather, uh, is to identify some the big shifts, the big global shifts in the economy, in the technology field, the society, to understand them better and to identify the impacts on our company and our customers, and our partners, and opportunity to find new opportunities for us. It can be services, but also new methods, new organizations. And we have also uh, another goal, uh, which is to, to bring some new methods, uh, innovation ways uh, inside La Poste, uh, like, uh, I don't know, creativity, design thinking methods, uh, that all you know are aware of, I I'm sure. So it's a huge program, but a very interesting one. And I'm really uh, pleased to be, to be here with you. So Anthony, you're the innovation junkie inside uh, La Poste, right? <laughs> so um, let's start with you, uh, Rudy, because you started with your company, a study, uh, whose uh, main objective or question is to uh, identify the level of awareness of those topics inside big companies and also to identify what are the barriers or limits uh, for collaboration. What kind of insight can you give to us uh, referring to that study? And perhaps you can start uh, disclosing a little what kind of companies did you survey? Yes, so it's very big companies. It's companies like uh, Disneyland Paris, uh, SFR is like Vodafone, it's a mobile operator, uh, phone mobile operator. Uh, we are um, uh, KFC, uh, um, fooding, and we work with the Walt Disney Company too. So big, uh, big companies in toys and products. So we we are we are currently working on this study uh, and uh, asking them if they know uh, the collaborative economy and if they are instead interested to uh, the uh, the collaborative economy and there there are, there are three conclusions uh, at, at this uh, step yeah. the first one is that um, uh, few people in these big companies in France uh, uh, are aware of collaborative economy uh, they don't they don't really know uh, what uh, what are the, the issues or the opportunities so the the, the first uh, the first step uh, for for us uh, 
at Happy Curious is to um, help them to understand uh, the uh, the opportunities, the uh, the, uh, the issues, and try to um, make pedagogy uh, to um, um, popularize uh, the, the collaborative economy. The second conclusion uh, it's um, that is that. These people on different staff uh, who employees in big companies are not technically trained uh, to uh, these uh, new issues. Uh, when we argue with uh, with them and when we uh, talk about uh, most known um, initiatives like uh, or companies like Airbnb or Zipcar, the, the most known, uh, they they um, answer that it's different model it's another model it's not their model and so they they are not um, uh, they they can't go to i'm sorry for my bad english um, but they they don't have uh, issues um, and the, the the first thing is that um, uh, Sharing business. So when we talk with these people about um, uh, sharing economy or sharing uh, or colla collaborative economy, um, sharing ideas, okay, sharing tools, okay, sharing resources, okay, but sharing business, it's more difficult for, for us. And so we have to uh, prove them, we have to uh, give them proofs to um, that it's a, a really, um, a really uh, opportunity for, for them to co-create with different communities uh, new products or new uh, new. Um, Services. It's for me the 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 the, the most uh, dif uh, things difficult to uh, to for collaborate with big companies. Well, sorry, that's an introduction. Okay, uh, they are not aware, they are not interested, and they're afraid. Right. Yes. Well, we we get a kind of good starting point for uh, our discussion. So it's now your turn to explain to us why you're not interested, why you're not aware, and it's your I leave the floor to you. Well, I don't know why I'm here because I, I only saw light and I came in. <laughs> no, no, um, uh, really. Uh, it's been, I don't know, maybe three, year, three years uh, for we have um, identified uh, sharing economy uh, as a huge shift uh, in, in the society, not only economy, but global society. And um, we have explored this, um, the, 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 the movement, uh, through our collaboration, so it's already a collaboration with WeShare, and um, we even made a big event, internal event, uh, last year with WeShare, with uh, Antonin and Benjamin, uh, we'll perhaps to, to connect ourselves to, to startups and to make understand to our traditional business units um, what was behind uh, the, the, the word uh, sharing economy and um, all the, the potential uh, of it. So for us, uh, there are many things, um, not only uh, concerning uh, our traditional economies, but um, it's uh, mainly how can we imagine new services for our customers and for uh, our partners. Uh, one good example is um, the the identity online identity service, which is uh, which has been launched uh, uh, at the beginning of the year and which is uh, exposed there uh, on the whole. So it's uh, it's um, it's more than a test; it's a launch, and you can uh, can have uh, information on this. Um, of course, it's a first step, but there is more uh, profound uh, ways of exploring sharing economy. Uh, one of these uh, opportunity is to make uh, internal people uh, to be more uh, collaborative uh, inside the company and outside the company, and uh, uh, towards uh, the, this goal, uh, we have. Um, um, we have several, uh, well, lots of uh, collaborations with um, partners in innovation, like a think tank, uh, like Fing, La Fing, with Daniel Kaplan, he was here yesterday uh, evening, and we share content. So we participate, and it's um, common uh, creative commons, so um, the contents of uh, this think tank and others are, are shared with, uh, with the community, and it's online, so it's, uh, it's another way. Um, building collaborative in, inside the a traditional company uh, isn't always uh, easy, um, but we uh, we have some some success, uh, petit à petit en français, step by step in English. 
And um, there is another field, um, a recent one, a new one, it's um, the excess capacity. So we identified a lot of excess capacity, capacities, uh, like um, spaces, uh, car, um, uh, the, the, the car, the, the postal cars of La Poste, and we experiment yet uh, some ways to share it uh, with uh, other people and inside people. Uh, I don't want to forget because I worked uh, four years ago on this project uh, with the people, uh, people, Fanny here, hi, <laughs> on the carpooling service, uh, which is a part of sharing economy for our employees first, but then if it works well, maybe we, we can open this carpooling system uh, for other companies and other people. So lots of, uh, of fields <laughs> in sharing economy. Yeah, lots of fields. Uh, so raise awareness, as uh, we could understand from your presentation. Um, identify new revenue streams. And that's also what I heard from what you said, and we can imagine from uh, what happens to the, your traditional business that you are somehow urged to find new revenue sources yes. and uh, foster open innovation uh, across the uh, inside the ecosystem of your uh, um, of your industry and uh, beyond that ecosystem. Alexandre, what what kind of uh, uh, collaboration did you enter into? First questions. Uh, first question: When you uh, uh, knocked uh, the first time at the door uh, of a big company, what was the reaction? Well, did, did uh, they open the door? Well, they didn't open the door, and then they, they ran away. <laughs> um, no, seriously, it was, um, we, we were pioneering a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing market. So basically, the insurance companies uh, uh, were like, whoa, what is that? Uh, and so they were very curious, but at the meantime, afraid. And insurance companies, they it's a bit uh, contradictory, but they don't like risk. So, uh, like going to a new product, going to a new way to uh, to uh, to drive your car is uh, very like innovative, and we don't know the risk yet. Uh, oh, they didn't know the risk. Now they know a little bit better, and so the. Um, the, it was very difficult for, for us at the beginning to have a, uh, an insurance company on board. So all of them were interested to meet us like uh, in a prospective uh, approach to know better what like young people, young-minded people uh, want to uh, behave uh, and, and stuff. But um, it was very hard, but uh, uh, thanks God, uh, massive. Uh, like uh, at a more open uh, um, approach, and so they decided to to partner with us. Uh, so my, it was a very big move for for us, and we really like to to partner with them because they they uh, they are the the leader uh, in car insurance uh, in France with seven million cars insured. So that's uh, that's pretty huge, and we like the very approach uh, their their collaborative approach. So they were already doing the the insurance of car sharing i don't know if you 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 guys know the difference between car sharing like autolib in paris let's say and uh, and car pooling because uh, I, I want to take just one minute for, for that so car pooling is like you share the your own trip to go let's say to saint tropez from paris to saint tropez and uh, so you are in the same car, where car sharing, you, sh you share the time of the car. So basically, you, you, uh, you can use anyone's car. And peer-to-peer -peer car sharing, what we do is allow you to rent out your own car and make money and make new, new friends. But so peer-to-peer so -peer car sharing was a, like a huge uh, uh, like, uh, uh, difference because uh, basically you are you are allowing people to um, to access anyone's cars, and how will they react within a car? We companies, uh, insurance companies knew that rental uh, rental companies don't have a good risk in terms of insurance. How will it be with people sharing their cars themselves? And what we are going to prove, and we already proved the, the, it's that it's a very good risk. When you are like uh, 
growing a community and sharing a car within your community. So you don't want to, to damage your friend's car or your, your community uh, member's car. So that's a... Uh, uh, but that was a, a very. Good how do how did react uh, the legacy actors of your sectors, names that's to say, traditional car rental company and car manufacturers? Um, well, traditional car rental company they at first ignored us because we were insignificant, and um, and we met them uh, after a while. Some of them were like. Uh, uh, really afraid, but some of them understood that it's actually uh, enlarging the market of car rental, and so that uh, it's more a, 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 an opportunity than a threat, and uh, we can partner with them. And for car makers company, so um, uh, of course that the first uh, the first thought is like, uh, oh my God, we are destroying car car industry, right? Because we share the cars, so so we enable to reduce the the number of cars on on the road. So, but actually, if you think uh, further, it's uh, just uh, the value, uh, the sh the shift and the value is uh, move from car making to car services. So, so basically, um, what we are trying to do with our uh, project and partnership with PSA, which is the Peugeot Citroën, the car maker company, is also to help them uh, figure out that, okay, you um, you guys were making comp you were making cars from the beginning, and you you are producing five million cars, and you cannot stop right away. But you should think how to change and like sell services to to people, and we are trying to help them. <laughs> Okay, so to sum up, uh, first they just looked at you and tried to understand and to use you either f to get more information or to get access to your community. And now you're entering into more operational cooperation uh, based on strategic partnerships or uh, let's say uh, clients to suppliers uh, relationship, right? Uh, Rick, uh, wh what's the, uh, uh, the examples that you have at, uh, let's say, European or global level, because we had here two examples very interesting in their field, but do you have examples in other industries in or in other geographies that could be uh, interesting to share? Um, yeah, I, I think the first thing um, is is that I think a lot of, uh, if, you're, if you're a large organization, you're probably not thinking about the sharing economy, and I don't necessarily think that's the best way to look at it. I, I think of it as new models of value exchange, um, because that's something that a large organization can understand. Opportunities to participate in new value exchanges and risk reduction. So um, one, of, uh, one of my clients um, is a software service company based in the U.S. called Intuit. Um, and they, um, they provide financial management uh, software and services. Uh, QuickBooks, you might know, in the U.S., they make TurboTax. They, um, they own uh, a variety of different tools. And um, they're really trying to move from a model of being product-centric to being network-enabled. So uh, one of the first things they did that was very interesting, they did a real mapping of their network. They have, um, they touch about 60 million people every month in the United States through some of their services. And they mapped how people were actually connecting to others, connecting to themselves. And uh, they found that there was more interactions going on between their customers amongst themselves than between the customers in Intuit as a company. And they thought, aha, that's pretty interesting. Um, we need to understand that more. So I think one way, if you're a small business and you want to interact in the sharing economy or any other kind of startup with, a, with large companies is to um, leverage your strengths against their weaknesses. You're fast. You can move quickly. You can experiment. Um, but what are your weaknesses? You can't scale. You, uh, you have no money. Uh, and I think that there's some natural synergies between um, startups, small businesses, and, and large corporations um, in that way. I think another model that's very interesting is IBM. Um, they typically, unless they're making an acquisition, um, larger scale, they don't invest or buy s small startups. What they do is go to market with them, which is really fascinating. They say, hey, 
your business offers something that we don't currently provide, let's figure out how we can go after a client together, especially in areas like smart cities. And I think that's a natural area for sharing startups to work in. So there's models like that. So you need to think about how do I, how do I position myself as a value add to the large company um, that lets them participate in an area they couldn't before. And uh, one of those areas, another one of those areas is to think about the long tail. Um, large organizations, a strength is um, process and scale. What's the downside? They're mass producers. They can't personalize things. They're not flexible. But small businesses can really attack and provide real value um, in the long tail areas. You, many of you probably started businesses um, based on things you know, either areas you know or a, 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 an area of the economy that, you, that you're passionate about. So you can provide services there the way that a large organization can't. That's a natural way to be able to collaborate. Uh, and another area is that the bigger companies get, they lose empathy with their marketplace. They have no idea who their customers are and how they live their lives. Small businesses naturally are co-located problem and solution with their customers. They understand their customers better. You can provide that kind of value also up into to large organizations. So it's not just the product you're providing to, but also all the different ways you interact with the marketplace that are completely different than large corporations that are really valuable to them if you can position it that way. Okay, so leverage on what makes you unique and distinct from... Uh, corporations. I think, Rudy, you have uh, an example uh, in the retail industry, and I think there are two examples that are interesting, uh, perhaps, of contributing uh, a contributive strategies. One is Walmart, and the other one is Auchan, is Auchan, who is quirky, and those two examples are really different, but I think they illustrate uh, one or other strategies that Javier disclosed uh, previously. But it's two different examples because uh, in France, um, Auchan, a big retailer like Walmart uh, in the United States, um, try to co-create with uh, their consumers some new products with Quirky, a uh, consulting firm who design products with uh, big companies in the United States and in France too. And they, um, they invite their web users or web consumers to uh, share idea um, on a p web platform, on, on a website. And uh, employees or uh, experts can vote for the best project. And then Quirky help uh, Auchan, the retailer, to uh, consider the business plan and the uh, the product to uh, uh, sell them in uh, in the the, the 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 retail first example the uh, the other example Walmart in United States it's different it's how a big company integrate integrate um, uh, collaborative economy in his marketing business so, uh, it's really different uh, there's no um, co-creation or co-innovation with web users or with a startup it's inside the company and uh, Walmart uh, inspire uh, the the process of the of the the, the collaborative economy and um, ask to uh, their um, online uh, customers to deliver uh, shopping goods uh, products to the online customers and for me it's for just delivery it's interesting because um, uh, retailers try to to, to find a good business model for delivery products and they don't find this and then they uh, try to, 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 to find another solution and uh, they uh, find this solution in the collaborative economy uh, philosophy. Can I just add uh, one, one example um, as well in financial services? Uh, we work with a large European bank and interestingly enough, and this is kind of following up what, what you, were, you were talking about working with insurance, they're specifically looking for startups in the sharing economy and, and other areas that are not in financial services. So they, uh, they want to move into services in general. They feel like they have an expertise at delivering services. They have a large audience, and that audience is looking for all kinds of services. So they're not just looking for financial services startups, but all kinds of startups. So I think that's another interesting thing, much like your example with the insurance company, you can be looking if you're a startup for not like who's in my space who might see you as a threat look at someone else who's not in your space who might go oh this is an interesting way to get into that space 
So it comes back to you now. Uh, why didn't you enter in such an interesting partnership with an agile uh, collaborative economy like Worky did with Auchan? What are the barriers to that kind of cooperation in your company or in other companies, right? Uh, not only yours. Are they related, uh, are they more internal uh, problems uh, regarding the organization, the decision-making process? Are there reasons related to those very small companies that are not yet professionals and we're not yet sure that they will be relevant in the market? Uh, what's your thought about it? Okay, so that's the part uh, where we will keep uh, what, what I will say between ourselves. Well, it's difficult, so don't tweet. No, no. Um, no, seriously. Uh, the, the, the main so tweet. Yeah. <laughs> I want to keep my job. <laughs> No, no. The uh, I think the the main problem for for us big companies. Uh, just to remind you, the the French Post is um, two hundred and fifty thousand employees. Okay, just to <laughs> is the the size effect. Um, the because when we size matters. Yeah, size matters. <laughs> in fact, when we work with uh, with. Uh, small companies, it's easy for us in innovation. We, we encounter a lot of uh, small companies, um, but we, when we try to bring them to um, more classical, uh, like uh, big boards or so on, they, they're, they are too small uh, in, with their, their revenue. Uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, well, we, we make uh, twen uh, 22 uh, billions of euros uh, a year, so when we when we bring a, a, a company, even if it's um, uh, a, success, a future success, uh, when when uh, when it's a, a three people company and um, some don't have customers yet, uh, we we cannot really uh, embed them them uh, into our company. So we have to find new ways to collaborate with them, to share uh, what we will develop with them. So it will be uh, a common. So there, there, there are questions with uh, intellectual property, for example, uh, and we are not. Uh, we are at the beginning of the <laughs> of the of the roads uh, with, with this. So and you're ready to share if the other one share first, right? Well, it, it's normal to that. Um, everybody keeps his uh, their, their 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 reflections and their work uh, that they've built before and counter. <laughs> And th that we, we share what we will build together. And then if we can't collaborate anymore, uh, everybody uh, keeps his way and keeps uh, what, he, what he can done. But it, it's not really a problem with a real startup, a small company, because even if we give uh, the startup ideas, they will develop it, them, but um, they, they can't compete with us. And um, we, we know that, so they're, they're, that's no problem with, with us. Uh, and we are not trying to 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 buy these companies uh, too early because uh, it's impossible for us, and it will be uh, a mess with, with the company. It it will be impossible for the 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 little sized uh, company um, to be incorporated uh, in, in the big uh, in the big company yet. We when we buy companies, it's more like uh, uh, middle size of uh, companies. It's more easy. It's not so fun, uh, easier, but it, it's more easy for us. And it's uh, the collaboration with small companies, especially in the sharing economy. Um, it's uh, it's uh, both uh, a way to to understand each other's. Um, for example, we we went to startup weekends. You, you know this type of uh, organization during a weekend and. Uh, and we help those companies to imagine some business model, and, and it's free. Uh, it's even weekend, so we are not paid for that. But uh, it's very interesting <laughs> uh, for us to discover some new ways and to help some some new entrepreneur. Actually, you should pay for that. No, 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 no. We <laughs> we are in a sharing economy, so so we we have to give something free. <laughs> And um, we are um, we are several to to well, we, we are a large number of people to believe in the in the, in the in the giving uh, way of uh, of thing. Not only uh, make uh, everything uh, payable. And Alexandre, what's your uh, insight on that from the insider point of view? Are you still too small? 
mm, well, we are already uh, collaborating with three very large companies, including La Poste. Okay, so you won't be nasty today. No, so I, I, <laughs> I have to, uh, to keep uh, polite, right? Um, so, the so we'll meet after <laughs> when having a beer. And but the, well. the barrier, I think, uh, is, is crazy uh, difficult to get the organization, like uh, who, who really decides and how to reach that guy. Uh, and uh, the, the processes of, uh, of decision making are so, so, di so uh, complex sometimes. And sometimes you are just wait, wasting your time uh, with the wrong guys. Uh, and you don't know it because maybe they don't, uh, they don't want to tell, uh, to tell them that they are not uh, the one that's going to help you. They want to maybe help you or to absorb some knowledge. I don't know. Uh, so it's, it's quite uh, un difficult to, to get the organization. And once, once you get the organization, it's really... Uh, time consuming to to get to the decision like it, it takes a long time to for for massive for instance it took like eight, 18 months uh from the like the first meeting to the open uh, of the of the insurance product so 18 months is in a in a compa in a startup framework is like uh, eternal right you can just uh you can just uh, maybe have no, you know, maybe uh, just can eat bread uh, because you you don't have money and and stuff. And once also uh, maybe you can consider that you are losing your time uh, while not building really the product and be building the company. But actually, it's also really important for for building the trust of your company of your product because. In the case of insurance company, or in the case of any st any startup in the collaborative economy, the trust is the main issue. So, so you have to 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 uh, to, uh, to, uh, to balance to between balance. Uh, building and exactly. pursuing partnerships. You want to do add something, right? Yeah, on, on the complexity, uh, even for us, uh, it's often sometimes very difficult to know who decides and okay, who's. If you don't know, uh, well, that's a bad news. Yeah, <laughs> well, we are we are a few. So, <laughs> uh, for example, on on the excess capacity matters, um, we are persuaded that it, it's very interesting, but uh, it, it is everywhere. It's a it's a global problem, so it's really. When it's everywhere in the company, it's really nowhere because uh, nobody can put it in a real box like, is it in the marketing? Not really. Uh, is it in uh, human resources? No. Uh, housing uh, project division? No. So we have to, to find the right sponsor, the, the right support inside the, the, the company. And we found us, it's the financial division to, to identify new ways yeah, to get value uh, from um, underemployed uh, capacities. Uh, it was really recent, but it was very interesting. On the startup things, it, it is really true. Um, we often m meet some, uh, some startups and they say, okay, um, I had six or seven appointments with different people in, uh, in La Poste, and I, uh, I lost a lot of time and say, oh, it's a problem. But it's also a problem for us because many people <laughs> lost a lot, uh, a lot of time too. So we try to improve this process and to have some like uh, uh, unique checkpoint for, for startups. Like uh, startups in the digital, digital, it will be, I hope so, digital division first. And then we qualify and then we send you to the, 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 the right guys in, in the company. If not, it will be difficult for, for us both. But for, for taking back the, the example of Massif, uh, actually what we figured is that we were in like, um, like maybe nine departments were involved in the decision making. You have the environ uh, environmental, difficult word, environmental world, uh, the department uh, involved, the risk department, the financial department, the sales department, the marketing department, like everyone was involved. So that's, and it's really new, so it's risky. So 
who, who dares to take the decision and and on other points that uh, uh, might have happened to us after 16 months of like meetings and stuff uh, is like sometimes in big companies the uh, directors the one who, the ones who take the final decision change so they they just switch and so you so it happened to to me i was uh, in the process of opening in september so the first question that you ask when uh, meeting someone is how long have you been in that position right yeah <laughs> I think you. you anywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. But what happened to us is in September 20, uh, so September 11, so the same uh, as uh, we we all know, 911. Um, so the the September of 11, we uh, were expecting the product to be launched, the insurance product. So we we uh, were a small team, but still, every one of us were, were working on the launch. Like the marketing, the design, we were we just built uh, also the the app for the insurance company to to be uh, included in the app. And what happened is I received a call from the guy I, I was in touch for like 16 months, and he, he was like very sad on the phone to announce me. I'm I'm very sorry, but uh, I have a very bad news. It's not gonna happen. So. Uh, so you, you, I was working for 16 months, and uh, some competitors arri arrived. Well, lucky point. you, we conceived that it was a bad news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very, um, like, I think I, I was angry, but in a positive way. Uh, so I'm. Uh, Can you show so us how, how, <laughs> how you are angry in a positive like, way? Very energetic, <laughs> like. Uh, Okay, and so uh, this guy who was a little bit thinking in, in his mind that he was working for us as well because uh, that's important also the relationship between the, uh, between the guys uh, that collaborate together. So he fought, he fought for fighting a, for finding an, another solution, but he found it in one week once, uh, and um, where the rest of the process was. 18 months, right? So, so take care of <laughs> of the of um, be getting fast a positive answer. Otherwise, maybe the director will change, and then you have to start again. Or getting fast a bad news, so that you yes. can urge uh, more yeah. rapidly than when things are positive. Okay, I think we need to um, sorry uh, close. Temporarily, we have times for uh, Q and A's, um, and don't rush when the Q and A's are are uh, finished because we need you after all, and uh, um, we'll need probably the guys that are working in big corporations or other type of companies to <coughs> work with us in the workshop. So prepare your pitch because you'll be asked to pitch your call. So, any questions? Uh, is there any difference in the relationships between big companies and collaborative economy startups and other startups? Well, there can be, I think, um, depending on regulation. Oh. Um, if it's something that, that is a gray area that might be affecting regulation, then I think definitely, I think in the situation um, like with Alexandre, when his, his business is based on having to have insurance, a, a law needs to be changed or a product needs to come on the market. So I think absolutely it can, depending on what it is. If it's a marketplace, um, a, a trading of goods that's not regulated, then not so much, I would say. Anyone else have a... Really, it really depends. If it's really a disruptive uh, company, a disruptive service, it will be, of course, uh, tougher for, for, for the big company because they uh, well, what that's what we... Just like any innovative startup. Yes.
Um, yes, uh, I wanted to ask you a question about this partnership you mentioned uh, with PSL. Because um, I've seen the offer called Mu, where they offer the possibility to Citroën owners to rent their cars peer to peer. And so they are trying to, yes, to take a little bit advantage of, uh, of this. But in the long run, they will sell less cars. So, uh, and unless they, they really totally evolve, uh, what kind of, um, uh, what can you bring them, which interest them? Uh, what kind of partnership are, are you are you uh, uh, trying to set with them? So we um, applied together to uh, like. Uh, how do you say that investment d'avenir? So it's like uh, investment for the future that the government launched. So uh, where we could get a grant. By the way, it's uh, it's a great way for governments to make um, big companies and startup to work together to encourage by a grant. It's a it's a good idea. And uh, so uh, basically, we applied for a, for designing together. Uh, a mobility service, a mobility system for companies. Uh, so we still uh, say so it's uh, an experimentation. So we'll find out uh, together what are the real needs, and uh, and we'll design a, together an application. And um, um, how can we help them? We we bring basically the innovation, the innovative part. And they bring like um, like uh, their power. Uh, they they open their doors. They make uh, they make easy for for instance to collaborate with cities like Rennes or Lyon. So when PSA talk to cities, it's not like the, <laughs> it's not uh, yet like uh, the ways talk to cities. So um, so of course it's uh, it's very helpful and they. Like uh, manage the the project. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, and for I think they deserve a kind of applause, right? No.